Okay, let's talk about creating a virtual machine. Now, just so you know, this is what we're going to walk through is the process of manually creating a virtual machine. SCVMM is designed to allow you to work with templates and profiles. We haven't created any. We're going to do that here in a little bit. But I wanted to show you how you could go through and create a just a one-off virtual machine in SCVMM. And there's going to be a couple of things here that we want to be aware of for when we start working with uh, larger deployments. So I'm going to click on Create a Virtual Machine. And notice I have the option right here to create using a virtual machine uh, an existing virtual machine, a VM template, or a virtual hard disk. Or I can create a new virtual machine where everything's blank. So if I had an existing VM template or whatever, this is what I would use. But I'm going to create a virtual machine with a blank virtual hard disk. And I'm just going to manually do everything kind of the hard way this time. And I'm going to click Next. So I'm going to give it a machine name, and I'm going to call this Test VM. And then I can add a comment here and I can choose generation one or generation two, kind of the same thing we dealt with with Hyper-V. So I'm going to click next. And here's where we can give our, or do our hardware configuration. Now, this is where I would manually configure everything. If I had predefined hardware profiles, which I don't, but we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Right here, I would click my drop down and select the hardware profile that I wanted. So let's just walk through some of these settings. I want this to be compatible with Hyper-V, so I'm going to select that. Uh, I can select how many processors I want it to have and uh, how much memory. And I can either do a static amount of memory or I can set dynamic virtual memory. I'm going to set this one as static as 2 gigs. But I can also enable dynamic and set my startup memory, my minimum, my maximum, and my buffer percentage. So here's where I have my SCSI adapter and my attached devices. So I've got my test VM uh, disk one, and that's creating a new virtual hard disk, use an existing one, set a channel, set whether it contains the operating system. Is this a dynamic or a fixed VHD? What size is it? What's the name of it? And then this is my virtual DVD drive. And I'm going to choose an existing ISO image and then browse. And this is going to take me to my library. And it's going to show me all the ISOs in my library. I'm going to pick the Ubuntu one. Not actually going to load it, but I just want to show you how to create it. So I'm going to pick my ISO and attach it here. And then for my network adapter, I get to choose if I want it not connected, connected to a VM network. And we just have one default VM network already. So we're just going to go with that. But if I had more than one, if I defined additional networks, then I could go ahead and add in additional networks. And then down here, you can see we can do uh, IP addresses from a pool or a dynamic IP or same thing with dynamic or static MAC addresses. So once I have everything I want, oh, let me just scroll down here a little bit more so you can see some of the advanced options. We can set how we want checkpoints handled for this. Uh, do we enable, disable, use standard, uh, use production checkpoints. We can set our availability. We can set our firmware, our CPU priority, our memory weight. And those are going to, you know, higher more important devices are going to have higher levels of CPU priority and memory weight. Lower priority devices, probably a little bit lower. So I'm going to click Next. And then I'm going to select my destination. Now I can deploy this uh, to a private cloud, place it on a virtual host, and then I can select if I've got multiple host groups. I can select right here which host group I want it to go to. So maybe I have, you know, three hosts in one city, four hosts in another. I've got them in separate groups. I can filter it down by, I want this one to be hosted in city two. I can also choose to store it in the library, which doesn't actually let me use it right now. I just store it for later use. And then when I want to use it, I have to take it out of the library and deploy it on a host. So I'm going to go ahead and place this virtual machine on a host. I'm going to click Next. And then this is going to show me all of my hosts that I have in my system right now. 
there that I'm managing. And you'll see I've got four of them right here. And each of these hosts is going to have a rating. And that rating is based on the amount of free memory and processor time it has. So this lets you see this. these hosts are have a lot of extra space to manage an additional VM. These ones don't. This is kind of all the same. So I'm just going to pick this first one here and click Next. And then I've got the location, the networking adapter, other basic settings that I might want to change. Now that I've selected a host, I'm good with everything because I've already set it. So I'm going to click Next. And then what do we want to do? Don't turn on the virtual machine when the server starts up. When the virtualization server stops, what do we want to do? Save state, turn off or shut down. Uh, specify the operating system you will install on this one. And got lots of Windows servers here. Ubuntu Linux, I think was 18, give or take. And next. Okay, and then if I want to, I can actually view the PowerShell script that is going to create this for me. And we'll see if it actually loads. Here we go. And here is our virtual machine, or the script that is going to use to create that virtual machine for me. So when I'm happy with it, I just click Create. And this pops up, and we've started the creation of a virtual machine. You'll see I have another one already going here. So that's going to keep this thing busy for a little while. That's okay. I can close this jobs window and keep working, and this will keep working in the background. And then when it's ready, I will be able to use my virtual machine. In the meantime, you'll notice that it's showing me two virtual machines. So I'm going to click on that. And it will show me they're both in the process of creating what host they're on, uh, what operating system they have, uh, who the owner is, what the job status is. And so now I have created a virtual machine. Now, I kind of did that the hard way, but we'll walk through in a little bit how to create a guest OS profile and a hardware profile and a template that will make deploying these virtual machines a little bit easier.